She's making a, she's making Necropanti a happy man here. So what do you think about uh, the OLPC? Well, you know, I I, I know Nicholas Negroponte, and, and you know, the Media Lab has been of great interest for a long time. So, you know, it, it, it's really interesting to see a project that you've heard discussed and kind of theorized about for years and years and years take on some kind of physical form. And you know, I'm very impressed by the design of the thing. Uh, you know, it's got all kinds of cute little applications and it's very child friendly and it's got a lot of the classic kid things in it like the Seymour paper logo thing and then you've got sort of like mix and match music things in it which are like got samples by DJ Spooky and you know you got all these all these little luminaries to come in and do all these sophisticated little graphic design touches and so forth and so on. So you know as a physical object it's like really cool. And now the real trouble starts. Oh yeah? There's you know, trouble? Well it's all political, yeah. What is the political trouble? Well, you know, A, it doesn't sell for $100. It sells for about $180. Uh, B, they uh, lost uh, uh, you know, their Intel sponsorship, I think it was, when the guys who were sort of planning to do a whole lot of computer chips for them. Uh, in order to get the price down, it's supposed to hit major economies of scale. In order to hit major economies of scale, they've got to like sell it in China, India, Indonesia, Africa. You know, they have to have governments agree to buy 100,000 at a time. Governments don't seem to be buying 100,000 at a time, probably because they want to do their own or they don't. Right? So, uh, you know, it reminds me of a similar device I saw about five years ago, which is called the Simputer which was, you know, invented in India and planned for to bridge the digital divide, right? Yeah. It's like, um, well, you know, poor people can't afford computers, so we're going to, like, make a poor people's computer, except poor people do have computers and their cell phones. All right. So what do you think about it? Well, you know, I, was, I think it's so pretty, you know, and it's less, uh, uh, let's have it in the spine, you know. And I only wish I, well, during the, the my first days of blogging and, you know, during the bombings, I had this Mr. Toshiba Tashanovich, as I call him, you yeah. know, he's a, he was a Toshiba laptop, but his battery life was so short. And, but, you know, the fact that I could hide it and put it in my bag and, yeah. you know, go through the city and even if they stopped me, the police or whoever, yeah. you know, it was like... And then I could like plug it, you know, because we had the city, which sometimes uh, the, the ground lights were on and off, the electricity was on and off, you know. So I had to run from one part of the city with my laptop in order to be able to send off uh, my text, you know. And I, it was a very funny moment in my life because I was carrying at the same time meatballs, you know, yeah. to find electricity to make some food, you know, and my laptop in order to send off my uh, my messages, you know, my, my SOS. Do you think I think it might help uh, in some countries where there's uh, deficiencies in uh, uh, what's it called the uh, freedom of speech. Yes, absolutely. If like they get some computers, some of the children it might yes. start something. Freedom of speech and also it it, it will help for uh, uh, like the women, you know, women activists who yeah. are uh, first of all who know nothing of computers, you know. Second, because they can't afford any. I mean, you know, three thousand yeah. dollars and three hundred dollars is a big difference, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think they have a lot of to, a lot to say, and uh, much more than people who, who are in politics from the mainstream, you know, from the top, you know. And then they could really make a network and report, and especially in the actions of activism that yeah. they do, like re reporting, monitoring the elections, or you yeah. know, the violence in the country, or in this this could be really something yeah. which is immediate impact on on politics. Like but, uh, doing the videos also. Yeah. Yeah. So if, uh, if uh, Nicolas Negopandes' uh, vision succeeds, and let's imagine like millions of kids have it like in next year or something, what, would you think it can like really change society or something? Well, I think his vision is going to succeed. I, yeah? I just don't think necessarily his object is going to succeed. Yeah. Because, you know, the price of laptops is crashing already. You can go and get a commercial laptop for $300. That runs yeah. Linux. You know, unfortunately, it's not as elegant as, as you know, Nicholas is really kind of beautifully well made little charity object here. But, uh, you know, the market may very well meet that need. Yeah. You know, my, you know, my feeling about it when I heard about this project was, you know, I never really believed in the digital divide. I didn't yeah. really think that was going to be a major league problem because. People throw away computers really quickly, and there's just a huge used market for computers. And if you want to get free computers, you can use Linux and all this other kind of stuff. So there's been 
it's just not that big a deal to give poor people computers. And if you do give poor people computers, they're not necessarily instantly turned into rich people. They're just poor people with computers. All right. You know, it's like poor people with cell phones have cell phones, you know. Uh, African universities have broadband sometimes. Um, there are difficulties in society that aren't really cured yeah. by more of these objects. Do you agree? No, no, no. I no? Don't, because I come from a poor society. You yeah. Know? And uh, I know how much the life of poor children, you know, like uh, who grew up, yeah. uh, you know, all children are poor in Serbia, you know, basically. Very few. And ever since the, the computers were less expensive and they're more, yeah. I know how life of these children have changed because they, they, they get, they learn languages, they read the news, which is not the local news, you know, okay. and uh, they're much more, uh, because, you know, Serbian children, like I'm speaking yeah. of children, but I can speak of anybody, you know, really, but they're more in the computers, you know, because I have a daughter who grew up with a computer, right. the, the generation before her didn't, you know, and I know how much her tastes have changed, you know, because yeah. she's not watching only the local TV, the turbo folk, the kitsch, the, you know, and how she learned languages by, you know, and how she is making social networks with people outside. And, you know, our children and our people cannot travel. They don't have visas. They're completely isolated by all the countries around them uh, ask for a visa and they don't get them. They don't get to get them. So they don't get to travel. For them, really, you know, it's a spaceship. It, does, it doesn't yeah. change. They don't become rich, of course, but the quality of life yeah. becomes much richer and they're like happier people. Do you think it would be a good idea that they get as many as possible as soon as possible over yes, there? I yeah. think so. I, you know, I would, I would absolutely. You know, yeah. I would, you know, I would give computers to anybody. All right. Well, do you want to say something or thanks? What do you think about Lyft? Uh, well, you know, we're both really happy to be here, and uh, we wouldn't dream of being here without laptop computers. <laughs> so it's, it's not like you know, I would not argue that they're useless. It's just that. I don't think it's very likely that Nicholas Negroponte would be allowed to give $100 computers to, say, every Serbian child or every Chinese child. Not because they're not good computers, but because he's Nicholas Negroponte. That's the only problem? Well, you know, it's because of the system and the people who are behind it and doing it and, you know, and, the, and the reasons they're, they're doing it. You know, and they want governments to buy hundreds of thousands or millions of them in bulk. Yeah. And in order to do that, governments have to sort of say, you know, Nicholas, you're great, and you know, we, we really love what you're doing for us here, and we trust you, and we want you to go through with this. Okay, he's a great educator. You know, and MIT is one of the greatest schools in the world. And if you want to go to MIT Media Lab, man, you'll learn a lot about media. But that doesn't mean that everybody in the world loves MIT Media Lab. You know, a lot of people in the world would worry about the political implications of, you know, free was like free what? You know, first one's free. And, uh, you know, this isn't so much a cheap computer as it is a sort of outreach of Negroponte and his collaborators. And that's what makes it problematic. I mean, that's why the Chinese government didn't say, oh, oh, great, please give us a billion which would have solved a lot of problems, you know? But they're just not gonna, any more than they, you know, accept other people's standards and other technical ways. It's, you know, it's not that it's not well designed, it's not that the intentions aren't good, it's just that there are political difficulties. I mean, like, why, is, why do Serbians get no visa? It's not because they're Serbians, it's because that's a very politically troubled region. Oh, well, give them computers, you know, and now they've got little spaceships in their backyard. You know, I'd take one in a minute. If somebody wants yeah. to give me an OLPC, I'll find a use for it. Okay. You know, I wouldn't mind having four or five. I've got friends who bought into the yeah. program, you know, I was like, buy one, give one. I respect them. I respect their intentions. Uh, you know, I'm not a cynic about it, but... I just don't see how that project's gonna pan out. All right. Thanks. Thank you.